weekly punch. It proved to be a big success, with the single charting just outside of the top 10 in the UK and became a firm fan favourite. Along with a progression in sound came an expansion in the lyrical content and subject matter of Muse's output. With shades of science fact and fiction creeping into songs on showbiz, Origin of Symmetry began to develop these ideas further in such tracks like the opening song, Newborn. Well, Newborn is an interesting track because, again, it's a track that kicks off the album and it's a track that, again, is not necessarily what you'd expect an album to start off on. You know, I get the sense the music always want to go, we're not going to um, do the obvious thing, we're going to do something that's going to you know, mess your mind a bit. It's something slightly mystical about Newborn. It's uh, almost hypnotic and it's driving, you know, bringing you in with its riff and it's bringing you in with the strange sounds that it's creating. Yeah, I think Newborn was one of the first songs that uh, explored one of the more sort of crazy ideas that, that Matt was coming through. I think he, he got the idea from a book he was reading about the idea that the, the, creating robots was like a, a, new, see, a new sense of um, evolution, and that this was like a, the birth of a new sort of being, and that robots would eventually become uh, as intelligent and, and as much of a uh, living organism as we are, which I think is a, a fascinating idea. Um, but the, the result of, of, as many song, many of his songs are, of Matt dipping into the odd book here and there, and, and reading a chapter here and there, and then sort of making up the rest, which I think is a fantastic way of, of working, and made for a really interesting song. I think uh, the elements of you know bringing more piano into the songs was something again Matt had been doing live, so it wasn't it wasn't too much of an alien thing for us, you know, and it wasn't something that you know I remember consciously mentioning to any of the producers to do less of, but you know, but but what was important was that you know they still wanted you know they still very much were a rock band, so and I don't think that the rock edge went away. I think if anything, the piano just added more me melody and it and it just you know gave the sound a lot more depth. Um, so I don't think it really took away from anything of what they were. If anything, it added a lot more. And, you know, we, we were all for it. After completing the sessions with Dave Bottrill, which spawned three out of the four singles from Origin of Symmetry, the band returned to work with John Leckie, who was to produce the more experimental tracks on the album. Each track probably had a different mood. Tracks like Screen Ager, uh, which was, again, took to a totally different kind of angle with, um, uh, with Dom playing uh, lots of interesting percussion. We wanted to get um, a kind of spooky, strange, kind of mysterious feel on it and we didn't want to use regular drums, you know, didn't want to use their usual instruments. And so um, a mate of mine had some old drum kit, and, you know, an old rusty Ludwig drum kit and, you know, resonant sort of snare and things. And I borrowed these old, the, the old drum kit and uh, I, I used to have, there's, there's South, Africa, uh, South American shakers and they're actually llamas toenails, you know, and, that you, that they're actually toenails from cattle all strung together on a string and you put them around your wrists and shake, you know, when you play guitar, in a lot of South American, they put these shakers around their wrists and when they strum the guitar, you get the rhythm going with the shaker. Um, and they loved this and we were gonna get some human bones and I think we did get some animal bones from the butcher and boiled them up and bleached them and, uh, you know, bang them together to create this sound and, you know, just generally created a spooky sort of mysterious atmosphere. Surrounded 
reminded me very much of uh, that kind of Tom Waitsy, very, very kind of swampy, swampy kind of weirdness, you know. Uh, <clears throat> and then um, other tracks uh, like uh, Megalomania, where we uh, we went out to a local church in, in Bath and Matt recorded, uh, well we recorded Matt playing a massive pipe organ. So with the track that became, that, that became Megalomania, um, it always had, you know, the, the, the demo I think, or when Matt was playing it live, he'd have this organ, da 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 da, kind of fanfare thing. And he said, come on, let's, let's, we need a real church organ on this, we don't want to use uh, just a keyboard, you know let's find a good church organ. And so we jumped in the car and as we're driving through Bath, he goes, stop, 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 look, there's a church, stop. And he jumped out the car, ran into the church. I went off to park somewhere and Dom and Chris are in the back. And as we walked into the church, opened the church door, there's Matt playing the organ. <laughs> and he'd walked in and the organist was playing and he walked straight up to the guy and said, can I have a go? And the guy said, yeah, sure. And it's me, me, Chris, and Don walked in, and, and there was Matt, like, with all the stops out playing this organ. He said, it's great, this is what we use. And so I had to talk to the vicar and, you know, just arrange a fee. We gave him a few hundred quid for the, you know, church fund, you know. Um, and about a week before we were due to go in to record this, um, the vicar had contacted me and wanted, uh, wanted a copy of the lyrics of the song, you know, of what the song was about. Um, I hope you understand, he said. I said, oh, yes, you know. And uh, so I said, Matt, you've got, you got to write these lyrics out for the vicar or else we can't use the organ. And, of course, Matt hadn't actually written the lyrics yet. So he scribbled out some positive, kind of nice love sort of lyrics. It's kind of a shame that it has to be linked to the idea of prog. I mean, the prog in the 70s was so dull and, and, and self-indulgent and... There wasn't really much rock to it. And Muse weren't really doing that. They were, they were making longer songs. They were making songs that shifted between various sections. So they were clear, clearly delineated sections of their songs. But they were still fairly tight. Um, they were still noticeably rock or pop songs. They were showing real signs of, of being able to make, not so much, take, not so much new, a new prog, but take the ideas and the, and the ambitions of prog and put it into a modern rock context. The final single from Origin of Symmetry was a double A-side featuring the blistering rock riffs of hyper music and Muse's own take on the 1965 Anthony Newley and Leslie Brickus track, Feeling Good. Although failing to top the heady success of earlier single releases, Feeling Good peaked at number 24 on the UK chart in November 2001 and proved to be another interesting and innovative turn from the Tinmouth trio. Feeling Good had been a song that they'd been playing out live but, but were very reluctant to record, and so it took quite a bit of persuasion getting them to put that down onto tape. Feeling Good was a, a kind of a throwback to, to Matt's upbringing and the classic records that he heard as a youth. Um, and I think it really underpinned uh, Origin of Symmetry. It was a great thing to have on there because our, in, in the middle of all of this sort of sprawling, ambitious sort of craziness was this familiar song done in an edgy sort of way and, and certainly one that wasn't sort of doffing its cap to the original it wasn't you know he, he sang one of the verses with a megaphone so he was quite willing to to mess around with it to play around with with the original Birds flying high, you know how I feel. Sun in the sky you know how I feel Rains drifting on by you know how it's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life for me, and I'm feeling good.